Because we're towards the end of the year now, I thought it would be a good idea to do a bit of a fun video and today I'm going to be reviewing your hot takes when it comes to SMMA or marketing or business in general. This is just going to be some tweets, some Discord messages that I've seen over the last few days that I've been collecting and I'm going to rate them either good or bad. So if you're not familiar with me, my name is Ben Lister. I help agency owners to save thousands and thousands of hours by sometimes even doing their outreach for them so they can start to work on the agency rather than in the agency. So I have seven hot takes saved and they're here on my laptop and I'm just gonna go through them one by one and put them on the screen. And the first one here is SMMA is literally the worst business model you can get into in 2024 along with drop shipping. Too much going on, too many skills, clients, headaches, etc. Focus on simplicity and skills that scale, aka close deals for someone whose brand is on fire and make 15, 20K a month. Straight off the bat, this is a bad take. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is not one that I would agree with, that's for sure. But you don't, you don't need a whole amount of skills to actually, you know, create a, a crazy SMA and get, you know, 10K, 20K per month. You literally just need sales skills and, and that's about it. Service delivery, you can basically just copy what most of the good agencies are doing in your niche and you don't really need to know a whole lot about actual marketing itself to, to deliver decent results, especially in certain niches, you know, like home improvements and real estate and a lot of service-based and local businesses. Those kind of guys are not experts in marketing. They're experts in their service and what they do. And so if you do a bit of research and you understand a little bit about their business and how to market those services, you can do a better job than what they're doing and you can make a lot of money from charging that. Now, the one skill that you do need, like I said, is sales. That's the main skill. Is it the easiest business model in the world? No, but it's definitely something that is a little bit beginner friendly and something that I would recommend if you haven't run a business yet or you're interested in making money online. And the next one, the only way you can grow an SMA is through cold calling. If you can't book calls through cold calling, then you should just give up. This one, I agree with the last premise there. If you can't book calls through cold calling, then you should just give up. If you can't do that, then you're not gonna be able to do anything because booking calls through cold calling is basically the first part of the sales call. And if you can't do that, then you're kind of not going to be successful. This is really important. You need to have you know a bit of verbal dexterity on the phone. You need to be able to convince people and to have that sort of willpower and determination to keep going. I do agree with that. But the only way you can grow an SMA through cold calling, that is not true. I've seen it done thousands and thousands and thousands of times. In fact, the vast majority of the calls that I've booked have not been through cold calling. It's only been a relatively small part of the calls that I've booked, whether it's with my home improvements agency or with the business that I'm running now. And it's not something, I would probably say this is a bad one. It's not something that I would basically agree with as such. But if you aren't booking calls through cold calling, I wouldn't say to give up, but I would say that this is one of the most important things that you can do simply because of the kind of person that can actually do that. So if you become that person who can book calls by just calling someone up and just convince someone on the phone very quickly, it means that you're a little bit charismatic. It means that you can actually convince someone to do something. And that is kind of the, the cornerstone of sales. And so if you're good at cold calling, it probably means that you will be good at sales at some point. So, you know, it's a bit of a 50-50 one, but I would overall say it's a bad take. Selling a $5,000 a month service is easier than selling a $50 a month service. When you're first starting out, leave low ticket offers to the pros. What I would say with this is that if you're selling a $5,000 a month service compared to a $50 one, it is not 100x difficult to sell, simply because the people who are buying $5,000 a month services, if you're even in that, that realm where you could spend $5,000 a month or you are interested in buying a service, so you have a problem that is big enough that you would be willing to spend $5,000 a month on, it means that you have big enough pain to actually unearth. So the person that's selling to you, the salesperson in that instance, they don't have to do a whole lot of work and actually to uncover why you'd be willing to spend that kind of money. Either you have a lot of money, so that's not a lot of money to you and you, you don't mind spending it, or you have a lot of pain and you would be interested in buying something like that. When it comes to the $50 a month service, in order to actually make good money from that, you need to sell tons and tons and tons. And this is not a sales game. This is basically a marketing game because you're not gonna be jumping on the phone for someone for a $50 a month service. This is gonna be about website optimization. This is gonna be about marketing. This is gonna be about you know your conversion rates, all that kind of stuff, which is not to do with sales. And so I would say it's not easier to sell the $5,000 a month one because if you only sell you know one of those, for example, you'd have to sell $150 a month one. So it's not easier, but to make money, especially in the online business space, it is easier to make money when you are selling high ticket stuff than you are selling low ticket stuff. And that's simply because of the volume. If you have two $5,000 a month clients, then you're already at six figures. But to do $50 a month service and to have you know 200 clients on board, that's a whole lot of work. And I don't think many people would actually be able to do that. So overall, I would say this is a good take.
And so the fourth one, Esme May died a long time ago. I wouldn't start now if you haven't started already. This is a bad take, straight up, this is a bad take. I would definitely say that Esme has not died because it's just, it's, it's not really like a phase. Like dropshipping, for example, was a bit of a phase where, you know, people would take products from uh, China or from different countries where they're, they'd be, you know, mass produced and they would sell them up using branding and marketing. And at some level that can be repeated, you know, and this can go for, uh, for years and years and years. And, you know, the idea of dropshipping is not a unique one, but people are sort of getting wise to it. And people understand that there's websites out there where you can basically buy it from, you know, cheaper alternatives. And if you see a product that's been marketed on Facebook or TikTok, for example, you're likely to know that you can actually find it cheaper somewhere. And if you just do a bit of research, you don't have to pay the, the quite expensive fees that dropshipping would come with. With SMMA, it's basically just a business model that is using social media as its marketing platform. SMMA as such, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use social media. You know, you can use many different things to actually sell, even though it's in the name, you know, SMMA. Advertising on social media is never, ever, ever going to go away. It's going to transition to different platforms that we use or anything like that. You know, every every six months there's a new social media that people are talking about you know whether this is a school that's recently popped up or you know twitter's made a lot of changes recently and you know a lot of advertising changes and there's lots of different things that you can do that all it comes down to is can you help a business can you improve how many customers they're getting and if you can then the business model isn't dead it's as simple as that that's not to say that it wasn't easier to sign clients five six years ago when this really first started to explode and facebook ads were a lot cheaper no one's doubting that that's for sure but to say that it's died and if you haven't started now then I wouldn't start already, that's completely untrue. There's people that started in the last few months that are already doing six figures and it's very, very possible to do the same. Number five, the person who speaks last always has the most information. Now this is a business one that I threw in there because I saw it and I liked it a lot and it's something that I basically heard very similar to on a podcast with Jeff Bezos and he was talking about the fact when he goes to meetings, he is the person who talks last. Now, the reason that he does this is because when he, he's the most senior in the room, obviously he was the CEO of Amazon, he's the you know the, the founder of the company. And so when he's in meetings, he's always the most senior person and he would always recommend the least senior person would talk first. Now, this is because if you, for example, are the senior person and you talk, you talk and you give your ideas, it's gonna influence the person who is less senior because obviously at some level, they might look up to you, they might respect you, different things like that. And so if you talk last, the person who is the least senior talks first and they give away their information and and they basically talk to you and they're more likely to give actually ideas that are true and that they believe. And so they might give an idea that they wouldn't have if they went last, if that makes sense. And I like this because the person who speaks last always has more information. This is great as well because if you're ever in a meeting or a sales situation or anything like that, you wanna hold off giving that information. I like to call it playing your cards. And so there's many, many examples that I can think of in life. My girlfriend recently is looking at getting a new job and she's talking about, you know, different things that are going on. And, you know, when would I say this? How would I say this? And I always come back to, you know, it's basically the same thing in a sales call. You don't really give the information until you ask the questions, like get the information off them then you give your information and you can use their information to give yourself a better answer and a better decision. And so if someone asks a question and you're not sure, you clarify, you speak last, you get them to give all their information first and then you start to speak. And there's so many examples where I can think of, this is a fantastic take, this is a great take. And I did add this in there because I did want to talk about it and I just think it's a great point and it's something that I come across that I thought would be good for this video. Number six, you will get more people to try your stuff if you lower the barrier for them to try it. And if your stuff is good, they'll pay you to try it again. This is a good take. So this is something that I've seen again and again and again. And when it comes to lowering the barrier, this is not in terms of price. This is in terms of, and that would be of course true. You know, if you charge $2,000 a month and you all of a sudden now the same exact service charge $1,000 a month, you're gonna have more people trying it. But if you lower the barrier, that means basically effort and sacrifice that's required. If for example, you ask someone, you know, I wanna jump on a call with you, I wanna basically demo the system for you and then we're gonna to sell to you and stuff like that. And you make it really difficult for them to jump on the call in some capacity. Maybe you say, you know, I want you to send me a Zoom invite or I want you to decide what time that we're going to meet. All of these things are all barriers in front of you. And if for whatever reason, you start to increase those barriers, you're gonna get less and less people trying your stuff because it's just more effort and it's just human nature. It's just the simple way that things go. And so if you start to lower those barriers, you know, you give reminders, you make it super easy. You say, here's the link for the call. This is what time it's gonna be, et cetera, et cetera. If you make the sales system really simple for them, you know, you don't have to do anything. You just have an agreement here. You just pay the invoice and we'll do everything for you. If you lower that barrier to entry, more and more people are gonna buy from you. They're gonna try your stuff. And then like it says, if the stuff is good, they will pay to try it again. 
Number seven, lots of people talk about disrupting an industry, but can't even fix their own habits. The most successful people I know don't just change the game, they change themselves, even when it goes against popular opinion. So this is an interesting one because this is something that I see quite a lot from, you know, business people, but people have made a lot of money, people who are very popular in the SMA space. What I would say is that as an idea, it's probably best to put yourself on this right path where you are changing your habits. You are the person who is actually doing something that's a little bit different. You're, you know, sleeping on time, you're eating differently, you are making sure that you do everything right. That's going to set you on a good path and give you more chance of success. There's no doubt about that. And I also agree in the sense that if you're not the kind of person who is currently making six figures, then you do need to become the kind of person who can make six figures. That means you need to have good habits, good beliefs, good systems in place, and you need to be that person who can go the extra mile and do something a little bit extraordinary. And I do agree with that. What I would say though, is that there's many people that I know, especially in the industry, people who run you know, very successful SMAs, people who are big business people, who don't do these things and they still make a lot of money. Maybe they used to, maybe they did for a period of time, but their habits are all off. They're not making you know, um, all the right choices. Their diet management, be off their health may be off maybe they're not focusing on all the right things and they're still doing incredibly well and so what i would say here is that people get very bogged down in sort of the the details and like that you know if i'm not having blue light blockers before i go to bed um then i'm 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 not gonna make 10k a month if i don't meditate for 20 minutes a day then i'm not gonna make 10k a month whatever it is but ultimately it just come, comes down to doing the work and actually getting it done it doesn't matter what kind of person you are at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you have meditated if you have you know been to the gym in the morning or whatever it is as long as you actually get the work done then you're gonna be the kind of person who can disrupt an industry you know and can actually go and, and do something and make that kind of money that you're looking for so overall i would say this one is a good take but i think there is a few caveats in there that you don't have to be that kind of person to to really make that kind of money and you can't actually do both and ultimately if you're just doing the work it doesn't really matter if you're you know not changing your bad habits or anything like that if you're looking to sign clients on a done for you basis then click the link in the description not asking for your email or your phone number we're not going to send you any emails or anything like that it's just a video of myself explaining what my company does you don't have to click it that's no problem of course but if you like the video then go ahead and click the like button comment if you want me to cover anything specifically and subscribe if you want to see more appreciate you watching this one to the end cheers